Well, hello. It's great to be with you. Today, I want you to hear and receive words of affirmation as Alaskan women. You are a valuable individual, not based on what you do, but based on who you are. You are created in God's image, beautiful and with a purpose. You are worthy of dignity and respect. As women, we have vital gifts to offer this world. We are strong, creative, wise, nurturing, compassionate, collaborative, healers, life givers, and sustainers. Well, if we agree that these are true, in fact, self-evident, why is it that women in Alaska and worldwide are suffering an onslaught of abuse and violence at epidemic levels? And even more concerning, why do too many Alaskan women believe the lie that this abuse and this violence is normal or justified? Abuse and violence take many forms human trafficking, domestic violence, sexual assault, child abuse, neglect. These abuses are against humanity, against both men and women, but they are mostly targeted at women and girls. Something has gone terribly wrong with our world's perception and belief about a woman's value. In contrast to the positive messages that we see throughout the forum here today, much harm comes from media, and that media that degrades and objectifies women. In other words, making them not people, but sexual objects. Day after day, all of us, but especially our young people, are targeted with thousands of messages in advertising, music, music videos, and movies. It's like a snowstorm, much of what, like what we've seen a lot of here in Alaska this winter. One flake falling on top of your head is inconsequential. It melts before we even know it. But multiply that by a trillion, and you have a blizzard burying everything in its path. So much so, it can slide off a neighbor's roof through an Arctic entry down the hallway through a bedroom door and pin someone unsuspecting in their bed, like what happened in Cordova not too long ago. So is the blizzard of damaging messages. Only the sad thing is, we don't even realize we're buried. It has gone on for so long and at such a rate that we have come to accept the message as normal. So what are the messages and who are the perpetrators? Well, a couple of them that give me personal angst are Carl's Jr. and Abercrombie and & Fitch. I'm just using those two ex examples. I have boycotted these businesses for several years because of their degrading and overtly sexual messaging. <laughs> Abercrombie, Abercrombie CEO Michael Jeffries calls Abercrombie and Fitch's image a movie because of the fantasy that plays out in store. Near luxury clothing combined with highly sexual imaging on the walls, the catalogs, the advertising, the t-shirts. Abercrombie has been taken to task in recent years for marketing thong underwear and push-up bras to seven to 10 year olds. Their back to school line, back to school line of t-shirts, sports slogans such as, who needs brains when you have these? Show the twins, or female students wanted for sexual research. You might remember Carl's Jr. changed their marketing strategy a few years ago back, or to target the young construction worker type. Brad Haley, head of marketing, focuses advertising on what he calls an ideal, an ideal young male's consumer world. When a, watchdog, when a watchdog group complained about an ad featuring Paris Hilton, you might remember this one, Paris Hilton basically having sex with a car and enjoying a burger, the CEO of the company responded, get a life, to the people that were concerned about that. Well, just one more example. This one from the music industry is a bouncy little song by Katy Perry called Last Friday Night. 
I heard this one on the radio last summer with my daughter in the car, and I was incensed. So here are a few of the lyrics from that song. There's a stranger in my bed. There's a pounding in my head. Glitter all over the room. Pink flamingos in the pool. I smell like a mini bar. DJs passed out in the yard. Barbies on the barbecue. Is this a hickey or a bruise? Pictures of last night ended up online. I'm expletive. Oh well. It's a blacked out blur, but I'm pretty sure it ruled. The song goes on from there. Because the lyrics were so awful, I wondered out loud if it was parody. But my daughter had a more realistic response. It's about the money, Mom. Well, I looked up an interview with Katie, about Carrie Patey, Katy Perry recently, and she described the lyrics as a bona fide party song, most of which was actual truth. Her co-writer says the song is pretty much a word-for-word -word description of our trip to Santa Barbara, along with Perry. So I love that one. It's real kitschy and fun and makes me, makes me nostalgic. Nostalgia? My heart ached to see these words. That Perry would believe and perpetuate the lie that this kind of risky behavior is somehow cool or normal or fun. What if your experience had ended in tragedy, as it very well could have? Maybe the lyrics would read more like this. Drug got slipped into my tea. Don't know what came over me. Gang raped until three. Now I've contracted HIV. Oh well. But I'm pretty sure it ruled. The examples could go on and on. These companies and artists are not alone in their degrading messaging. They are the norm. Such degrading, violence-laden, and sexualized messaging promotes the dangerous lie that women and girls are objects, not individuals of value. And that is the first step towards justifying violence. Our value as individuals also suffered, suffers under the collective burden of generational dysfunction. We know that abused children often grow up to be abusers, or they continue to be abused as adults. And until this cycle is broken, the pattern of abuse continues destroying families and communities. But here is some good news. The barrage of lies can be thwarted, and the chains of abuse can be broken. I recently met an amazing woman on the front lines in the battle to free women from abuse. Sister Eugenia Bonetti, a 73-year-old Catholic nun, is in the business of restoring digni dignity and respect. Picture her with me. In her nun's habit and sens sensible shoes, she doesn't stand more than five feet tall. But she is a giant in purpose and passion. She and her fellow sisters, 250 of, the, uh, 250 of them throughout Italy, wage war against the sex trafficking trade that is rampant in that nation. They literally rescue trafficked women off the street. They rescue them out of train stations. They rescue them even at great risk to their own safety. Provided with a safe haven, these women, and often their babies and children, are given love, medical attention, legal help, education, and training to begin a new life. And mo most important, they are shown every day with each act of kindness toward them the most important knowledge of all. They are worthy human beings, precious in God's eyes. And eventually, these women begin to believe it themselves because the emotional and mental healing takes a lot longer to heal than the physical wounds. Sister Bonetti brings persuasion and pressure to bear wherever needed to break the powerful flesh trade and restore victims' lives. She is a personality to contend with. Whether in the halls of Italian government, law enforcement, the victim's homelands, or speaking to groups all over the world, Sister Benetti brings the message, each of us has a role, and we must be engaged. So I came home to Alaska with this stuck in my head. Each of us has a role, and each of us must be engaged. And I am so proud of Alaskans 
because so many of you are already involved in this effort. So here are a few ideas of becoming involved right here in Juneau. Volunteer female coaches and event organizers, assistant coaches, are needed for girls on the run. This 12-week program's heart is to help third through eighth grade girls uncover their extraordinary potential and embrace who they are. The program weaves training, weaves training for a 5K run with experience-based curriculum. It's had great success here in Southeast Alaska. And here in Juneau, this year's goal is to have a Girls on the Run program in el every elementary and middle school. You could encourage male coaches to incorporate the Coaching Boys into Men playbook into their practices. This curriculum takes advantage of coaching opportunities to educate team members about treating girls and women with respect and honor, and the value of healthy, nonviolent relationships. Let Coach Blasco know, and the Thunder Mountain, basketball, Thunder Mountain Boys basketball team, how proud you are of them for participating in this program and for being such a powerful example on and off the court. To find out more about getting involved in Girls on the Run and coaching boys into men programs, stop by the AWARE booth, which is just over the wall here. Other ways to get involved. Become a big sister. Use your artistic skills and engage others to tell the story of dignity and respect in a creative way. I'm thinking of Diane Murph from Petersburg, who recently won the Choose Respect poster contest. Her artwork will be used throughout the state during the coming, coming year to send a message of respect. If you and others are bothered about messaging from the media and the entertainment industry, get organized and get involved. It's especially important for you teenagers, I see a few of you here today, to stand for dignity and respect in this arena because the media will respond when their target audience demands change. Send a message with your purchasing dollars as well. Something we can all do is participate in the third annual Choose Respect Rally on March 29th at noon at the Capitol Steps. The Choose Respect initiative was launched in 2010 with the goal of eradicating the epidemic of domestic violence and sexual assault within a decade. It focuses on prevention, enforcement, and providing services for victims and for victims and survivors. In its first year, 18 communities participated in the Choose Respect March. Last year, 63 communities across the state marched together. And this year, over 100 communities have committed to participate. Together with Alaskans all across the state, we can in unison declare that we are a people who choose dignity and respect. What a powerful message of solidarity and purpose. Anyone here who is being abused emotionally or physically know that you do not deserve to be treated this way. Abuse is always the fault of the abuser and not the other way around. Now is the time to reach out for help. Wonderful and caring people at the AWARE shelter can provide counsel and help with you thinking through your next steps. People are ready to help you in the process of breaking free from abuse. If you are concerned that a friend or coworker or associate is being abused, don't remain silent. Even if you are brushed off initially, if that person knows you care, they will come to you eventually. Setting people free from abuse and honoring the dignity and value of every human being requires the participation of everyone. We all have to be in. Government, churches, communities, coworkers, families, neighbors, and friends. As Sister Bonetti tells everyone, we each have a role. So thank you for letting me speak with you today about a topic that's not easy, but it is important. And by standing strong, and by joining together, by giving voice to our convictions, and by lending our courage to survivors, we will be an unstoppable force for good. And together, we will restore the dignity of every Alaskan. Thank you.